continuando na Conferência Internacional do Green Build Council Brasil em São Paulo. É um grande prazer e um orgulho para todos nós estarmos aqui ao lado do senhor Areb Robalá, diretor de consumo e produção da UNEP, que nos brinda com sua presença e é um orgulho estarmos aqui. Um dos trabalhos que a UNEP faz no mundo é uma ponte entre as novas tecnologias é, de, é, de, é, que estão trabalhando com sustentabilidade aplicadas e ajudando o desenvolvimento em municípios, em países e governos para que eles se desenvolvam com muita sustentabilidade. E é isto que eu estou perguntando para ele, aonde e em que países a UNEP está fazendo agora este trabalho? Thank you very much. Thank you for welcoming us in this extremely important uh, gathering and meeting. Uh, your question is extremely important in a sense that it engages UNEP in all its work around the world, where we need to understand how, what is the situation, what are the challenges and opportunities, and make sure that we can take them from one country to another so that we share experience. Buildings is, of course, a matter of technology, is a matter of knowledge, is a matter of architecture. And in different contexts, you have different approaches. Of course, the first thing we are asking to the, the people is use as much as possible your local material in order to ensure sustainability. Use as much as possible the knowledge of the people with the existing technologies so that you can ensure a good maintenance and sustainability of your product. And in case you have to import anything from outside, do understand it, do control it, be able to have a proper mastering of the situation in order to be able to involve and control it. Now, of course, there are cases in different countries where you have different approaches. For example, in China, which is the country actually using a, more than 40% of the cement of the world, it's extremely important that we see with the Chinese government and the Chinese companies how they can in, improve resource efficiency and basically material efficiency in the building sector in order to reduce the, the amount of cement used in the building and make sure that the cement that is also processed from the mining to be used in the buildings is using less energy, less water, less chemicals and so on. China is moving very well on that. The government is having good policies and inducing the comp private companies to work on this issue. You have the same also when you go to Germany, for example. Germany is using excellent policies with good technology involving the private sector and the citizens, where it's extremely important, making sure to see how the, the business sector is greatly involved in that, sponsoring the universities to get the right knowledge, the right technologies, establishing the right baselines. You can go to other countries, for example, such as Singapore. Singapore, which is really building a lot, has understood that if they want to ensure sustainability of their country, which is a high concentration of buildings. Their building has to be sustainable, but they have to make it a high quality because it's a society who decided to be a high quality society. They're involving and attracting all the wealthy people from surrounding, from Kuala Lumpur, from Jakarta, from Hong Kong, and so on. So they're applying the, the high tech technologies for that, but while at the same time ensuring that it is energy efficient, almost passive houses are being there. And for that they have developed very good criteria and interesting certification system that take the different elements from social aspect, environmental aspect, but also economic aspect. And we can go around the world and we can come to Brazil. In Brazil, you have excellent case studies done in various cities. Would it be in Rio de Janeiro, in Sao Paulo, in other cities where you have pilot project that from which we can draw excellent lessons. But what is interesting here in Brazil, for example, is the concept of social housing. You have a community here where you have a huge gap of housing and those houses cannot be built business as usual. So it's extremely important to see how we can by looking at the legislation, looking how to work with the local communities, looking how to work with green building councils and all the private companies that are around to see how we can mainstream sustainability in the construction. Would it be a high level? And mainly for the social housing, where a large amount of the construction will be for those poor and middle class population. An excellent pilot project was done in the region of Sao Paulo. It has been used as a test for other regions around the world. So we learned from Sao Paulo, we took it elsewhere, we have improved it and we will bring it back. So the work of UNAP is 
to see what's being done in the different countries, in different cities, enrich them one after the other, start with one, bring it back, and ensure that we do have this proper consultation mechanism with different stakeholders. Thank you, Arab. Bom, o senhor Arab, pelo mundo inteiro, ele sempre responde muitas e muitas e muitas questões com um carinho enorme, com uma paciência incrível e passando esse conhecimento maravilhoso que ele tem e as experiências que ele tem uh, com o seu trabalho, passando por vários países ao longo do mundo. O que eu vou perguntar para ele agora, que eu gostaria que não que fosse uma pergunta, mas que ele passasse uma mensagem para todos nós. Thank you very much. This is an interesting and very challenging question that I would like to very much connect it to what has been done in Brazil. In 1992, we have had the World Summit on Sustainable Development here, and one of the main messages was, we cannot pursue on sustainable development with our current unsustainable consumption and production patterns. Ten years after, in Johannesburg, the global community recognized that we absolutely need to promote sustainable consumption production patterns. So we moved from the negative side to the positive side. And it has been recognized as one of the three overarching priorities for the world community in terms of sustainable development. We have been working very hard on that in order to see what does it mean for the community to work on consumption and production from a sustainability perspective. One of our case study on our task force has been on buildings, the same as we have been doing on procurement, on lifestyles, on education, on products and on cities. So my main message here is if we want to look into the future, if you want to think in sustainable terms, the first thing is in-house. We need to look at our consumption patterns. We need to induce and change the production patterns that will respond to our demand. And we need to influence the government to take the right policies for that. So as consumer, each and every one of us has a critical role in promoting the change toward the right direction. But of course, we cannot do alone. The business sector is the one providing us with the products, and we have to tell to the business sector that we want from now on good products. We want safe products. We want houses that have less chemical painting. We want houses that have carpets that do not create allergy. We want houses that consume less energy. We want houses that are healthy for us, that will not push us to go and see doctors. We want houses that have more natural lighting so they can, we can live in better conditions. But we want also we and the business sector to tell to the government, we need the right legislation, we need your support, we need the right tools, we need you as government to lead by example. We need you to make sure that your public buildings, that the schools, that the universities, that the hospitals do respect sustainability criteria so that we use less energy, we have less chemicals, we all have a sustainable and better life, and this will be just the best thing for all of us. So, yes, we need consumption production patterns that go towards sustainability. But this is not only an environment matter. This is social, and this is mainly economical. We tend to forget that we have business case behind it, that we will save energy, which means that we save money. We reduce chemical use, we go less to the doctor, we improve the lighting at home, we are in better health and we produce, we study better. So it's just a win-win-win approach. It's a challenge for all of us, but there are huge opportunities. Let us take them. Thank you, Arab. Bom. Eu acho que esta mensagem do senhor Areb Rubalá para nós foi de grande importância e resume tudo o que nós temos falado para vocês tantas vezes. Vontade, 
trabalhem com as políticas públicas e entendam sempre que se você trabalha com sustentabilidade, escolhendo corretamente os seus materiais, todos ganham. Escolha de materiais corretos, tecnologias corretas, o envolvimento com políticas públicas, todos nós ganhamos. Ganham você em primeiro lugar, ganha o morador, ganha a sociedade, ganha o governo. Nós ajudamos e ganhamos todos nós, ganhamos todos, ganha a humanidade. É este o grande trabalho que nós temos que nos envolver e fazer. Temos que nos envolver. Esta é a grande mensagem. Muito obrigada.